Welcome back. Our next guest has completed over 70 marathons. Yes, that's 70 oh, throughout her lifetime, including every Dublin marathon to date. Now, she's just back from a lap around Ireland, as you do, to raise money for the RNLI. I've never felt so lazy in my entire <laughs> life. Runner Mary Hickey joins us now to chat about her success. Good morning to morning, you, Mary. Mary. Good morning. And thank you. Anybody else would be feet up, chilled out. You've just done a, a lap of Ireland. Yeah, so I'm, thank still, you. I'm still on a bit of a high, so are you? give me a few more are. hours and I'll be <laughs> horizontal. You'll be resting. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you very much. What gave you the idea to do that, first of all? Well, I reached 66 this year, which is official retirement age, and I kind of wow. went, whoa, where did I, how did that happen? So I, I've been running for 50 years, so I thought, I want to do something, something a bit big now and take some time out. Right. And I came up, into my head came a lap of the map. It's and such a clever idea, Isn't Mary. it a clever yes. idea? A lap of the map. <laughs> to the point where you kind of think, yeah, but you kind of think, how did that not exist before, a lap of the map? I know, yeah. It's great. But I just thought a lap of the map, and obviously I was going to go around the coast. Mm -hmm. I do coastal rowing as well, so I just decided there's only one charity I would do this for, and that's the RNLI. Yeah. And I didn't expect the RNLI to come on board with me, so I'd done a little fundraising for myself, so that all the money that came in once I started went into their fund. But my God, did they come on board with really? me. I visualised myself running by stations, taking a photograph, <clears throat> trotting on to the next town, looking for a, a hostel. But every single station, I felt so at home. They looked after me so well. You know, so they were like a support for you, were they? they I, I left without a support crew, but I have yeah. a great support team in Arklow of 10 people. But I didn't have a support crew with me. But I left, but I was never on my own, ever. Now, we're looking at something different here because this is you pushing your ex-husband, Tony, in the wheelchair. Is that yes, right? Yes, that was last year's Dublin Marathon. Unfortunately, Tony is one of the only men who had completed every marathon. But unfortunately, last year, um, all of a sudden, Tony just developed um, brain tumours and uh, he had to have two tumours removed and there's one oh, still God. there. He, oh. He's not great at the moment, but he's still hanging in there. So, he, but he wanted to do it, yeah. and only the day before the marathon, we got our hands on that chair. Wow. Literally, the day before. And you did the marathon pushing him. Well, we did, but I had the help of four friends, because it's a big chair, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. and uh, it's a long way to go pushing a chair. But we got there. We got there in a good time as well. That's do you so remember? Impressive. You've done every single double marathon. Today. I have. Yeah. Do you remember the first one? Oh, I surely do. How many is that? Do you know? Thirty-eight years in a row. 38 yeah. years in a row. The first one was crazy because I'd only done one 18 mile run and mm. there was only 40 women in the first Dublin Marathon and less than 2,000 people. As I say, it was like being back in the black and white days. We just got water and when I got up to 18 miles, it was like going into a black hole. I didn't know what was really? going to happen. You but I got wall. myself. No, there's no wall. There's no wall. No. Is it all there's no wall in your mind? No. It's difficult, it's horrible, it's hard, yeah. it's tough. It is only running, though. If you have your, your mind set on, there's a start line, that's the finish line, whatever happens in between, I'll deal with it. Did you and find, Mary, though, to say, go on each year, because uh, obviously running is a passion of yours, and yeah, fitness it's a passion. is a passion of yours, and rowing. Yeah. But between each of the marathons, did this is going to sound like a stupid question, not that they get easier, but did the prep change? Did you prepare yourself better for them as you, as you, as you got more experience with them? I kind of went through a few years of just <clears> learning and then I did pre prepare well and I managed to get a sub three hours. And then life gets wow. in the way. You work, I'm work full time all the time. But uh, some years I'd hardly train at all. But uh, I can, really? you know, it's, it's only a day out. It beats working. Yeah. <laughs> it's only this a day is, out to run 26 miles. This is your retirement miles. party, isn't it? Yeah, it's just, it's, I love it. And it is hard work. And... But people shouldn't be as afraid. I'm not, everyone shouldn't do marathons. It's not for everyone, yeah. really. 5K is far enough to be running. Yeah. But it's amazing how many people can do a marathon. It is only a long but day But you out. see, a marathon seems like a walk in the park for you because you moved well beyond <laughs> marathons <laughs> after the London and the Boston Marathon and other city mm. marathons. You did the toughest foot race on earth, which is the marathon in the Sahara Desert. Oh, I did indeed, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Without gators, I, I did it. I didn't do it the right way. I couldn't read a compass. I couldn't read the map. I didn't. The gators arrived. I arrived in London to fly out to the Sahara. My gators arrived in Dublin, so I just oh, had to go no. without them. And what is it about? Is it just setting yourself challenges, Mary? It is. Or? It is. It just, I like <clears throat> the endurance events. Mm. I like just seeing how far I can push myself. Yeah. I don't necessarily like pain and agony all the time. Yeah. I like my social life as well, but I like to have a crack at something like that. So, How do friends and family, loved ones feel about it? 
they're used to it. I'm doing yeah. it 50 <laughs> years. Like, they're yeah. just... And a, a couple of years ago, I was going to throw my hat at it because I love art and I love travelling and I love everything else and gardening and drinking and eating. You love life. <laughs> You I love do. Life. Love life. I love life. And the yeah. RNLI must love oh you because God. you've been a great flag waver for them on this whole journey. Because they know, do incredible work. They but do. But the biggest thing about this whole trip is the people that yeah. I've met. Absolutely lovely people in every station. It just, just, they're just the salt of the earth, literally. And uh, I've seen and heard a lot of stories about rescues and tragedies. So <sighs> they're definitely, I'm so glad I picked the RNLI, definitely. Now, I'm almost afraid to ask, but what's next? I, I have a few little ideas. I'm sure you do. Yeah. I have a little niggle or two that I have to get checked out. You have a couple of bitches you want to scratch. I was just about to what say, are they? Is the body protesting <laughs> at all? Oh, God, yeah. It is, it's okay. Absolutely. Screaming saying at you. no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, and you're but, ignoring. Uh, the way I look at it, this, this is a machine here, and this is the engine. Yeah. Right. And if the engine wants to do it, and you can get the body half right. Like, as I always say, if I was a car, I'd have been scrapped years ago. I wouldn't pass the MOT. <laughs> they wouldn't let me on the road, literally. Yeah. You like wouldn't I've have got had your a few bits of surgery and things like that. So, yeah. But you're still going. Uh, yeah. And yeah. there are plans to do other w w w crazy ideas? or There's one or two there, but it, I'll have to wait and see. Do they involve uh, will Ireland? I, will this pass the test? Are right. they outside Ireland, let's say? No, they're inside. Oh, are they? Yeah. I'm I, I, I'm thinking coast to coast now or something. Yeah, exactly. Home yeah. is our I've close, done the right? Coast. I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's done that. Yeah, that box is taking Mal and yeah, yeah. Mizzen, so and around the sides. But uh, every bit of it, north, south, east, and west, fabulous country. The only one thing that I have a little complaint about is the amount of rubbish on, on our beautiful, streets. beautiful roads. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a shame to see that, isn't it? In the most beautiful viewing gallery places yeah, yeah. up in the middle of the mountains. On the coast, there's you're looking at the beautiful scenery, and then you look down to get yourself ready to go, and you go, "Oh, Jesus!" Like, such a shame, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. So such if we a could shame. just come here, did you have hotels booked and stuff? I, I had no. I had three houses, three family people going to put me up. I ended up in hostels, lovely hostels, B and Bs, small hotels, big hotels, five star hotels, <laughs> honeymoon suites. <laughs> As I said, what's wrong with this picture? Like, Fantastic. You know, I was, I, I say it in the most beautiful, huge bedrooms. But kind of moment my house. to moment, nothing. I, my crew back in Arklaw organised all this. They right. were day ahead here, were they, two they days were, ahead of you. No, no, I didn't have any crew on the road. Right. No, they in were, terms of booking ahead yeah, for you, though. Yeah. They just sorted it all. I mean, yeah. I was, I would get up in the morning and come down to a town and just be a few people there going to roam with me. And I'd say, OK, lads, where am I going today? I would literally what wouldn't. Direction? Yeah. I know I can look at my details on on the phone, yeah, yeah. but I just come down. There'd be runners there, and I say, "Where am I going?" And they're you're going to such a place. You're staying in such as. I said, "Grand, let's Brilliant. go." Let's I go. didn't have to. Do worry. you listen to music? No, no, not, no, because the roads are too dangerous. Okay. The, one of the reasons I have three reasons why I went in the winter. Granted, the worst winter ever. Yeah. Um, one was literally um, the Arnold. I have to go out no matter what the weather's like when yeah. they're called. Uh, two was traffic. Winter is less traffic. The Wild Atlantic Way in, in the summer, mm. you spend more time in the ditch than you, you would, would on the road, yeah, yeah. literally. <clears throat> and three was, I have, I have a little coffee shop and it will be quieter this time of the year, so back to normality tomorrow. Oh. What's your coffee shop called? The Lake Coffee Shop. It's just yeah. in, the Cor it's in the Coral Leisure Centre in Arklow and it's taken over. When I left, Good. my son Calvin and a part-time girl, were, I just said, just see if you can keep it open for me. And, and if you can't, just shut the door and put clothes. Oh, well, you know. pop in for a latte if you're in the Dear, area and keep Mary's business Patrick, going. congratulations and well done, Mary. Thank you what very much. Well, well done. Very much. We've made over 60,000. I set out just looking for 20, which, like, people haven't got much money January, February, yeah. March, but we're, we're way surpassing that. 60. It is still, you can still donate. You can log on. Or an LI, lap of the map. Or just go to your local or an LI station and, and they'll do it for you. Brilliant. Good start. Thanks, Mary. Thanks Thank for you very, in. very much. Thanks, Thank you. Mary. Thanks right, a lot. still to come, Brent Pope is here to talk about his new motivational book, Win. You don't need that book, actually. No. The rest of us do. <laughs> but before that, on the catwalk, we'll show you how to still look great in the spring showers. See you in a few. <laughs>